Ecclesio from Solo Mode Games. When you play a lot of games, it gets increasingly difficult to come across a game that is truly unique, that's unlike anything you've ever played before, that is really almost hard to describe. Today's solo playthrough is for Maiden's Quest, and this is one of those games. When the game was described to me by the designer, I was trying to wrap my head around how it would work, or even if it would work. This is a game that can be played solo. It can be played cooperatively. It can be played competitively. It's one deck of cards. There's no board. You basically play the entire game in the palm of your hand. People could come in and help for a minute or two and then pop out. How is that supposed to work? Can it work? Well, let's head on over to the table and take a look. Okay, well normally this is the part of the video where I'd say here we have the solo setup for Maiden's Quest, but like everything else about this game, it's not quite as easy as that. Well, I wouldn't say not easy. If anything, it's extremely easy. It's just not quite the same. There's no board. Uh, there's no tableau that you're going to be building uh, in front of yourself. Really, this is a game that is contained in this deck of cards. And you play the game primarily in the palm of your hand. And so, uh, to be honest, I'm not sure the best way to present this uh, game to you. And so I'm just gonna kind of intuitively go with filming it as I play it, which is in the palm of my hand. Um, and I'm going to explain as I go along because I think that's probably the best way to, to get a feel for how the game is played. But generally speaking, you're going to construct a deck at the beginning of the game and the rule book goes into a, a nice amount of detail in how to do that. This deck has been already completed. I've, I've put this deck together, but just to give you a general idea, there's enough cards in the game for more than one deck, so I'm going to show you some cards that weren't chosen just to give you an idea. Uh, at the beginning of the game, one of the things you're going to be doing is choosing your maiden. And this is a maiden I did not choose. Uh, this is, uh, oh, what's her name? Alyssa Moda, looks like. Um, and your maiden is going to have some different symbols across the side here which really uh, will be explained as we go along, but you'll choose your maiden. So this is a maiden I did not choose. They've all got a special ability, and I'll explain the special ability of mine uh, here in a moment, okay? Uh, you also are going to pick kind of a enemy here. I believe there's a different name. I don't think they're called enemies, but it's basically that general idea. This is who you're trying to defeat to win the game, all right? This is one way you can win the game. You could also win by uh, exiting this dungeon that you're kind of uh, fighting your way through. You're also going to be choosing a savior, somebody that uh, was left behind in this dungeon that you are going to be potentially saving and also potentially leaving behind again. And you're going to be choosing a gown, all right? This is one of the gowns I did not choose, the ballroom dress. I've got a different gown in my deck. And uh, then there's also going to be some random cards. There's going to be some enemies. Basically, the idea of Maiden's Quest is that you are a maiden, as you might expect, and you're going to be um, leading your unshackled maiden through a tower, overcoming obstacles and defeating enemies using your skills and meager equipment you've managed to scrounge from your rooms. If you either escape the tower or defeat the captor who imprison you, you win. And I am absolutely not reading that verbatim out of the rule book. So the general idea is you've got this maiden, you've got obstacles and enemies that you're going to be trying to defeat using symbols on these cards. And these are um, multi-use cards in that they can be, well, I don't know if I'd say multi-use. They are cards that can be uh, flipped in different ways. And so cards can be upgra or upgraded or downgraded, and you do that by switching the orientation of the cards and flipping the cards over, and they're gonna have different symbols on them, uh, things along those lines, okay? To start the game, I make sure that I've got all of the yellow crowns in the bottom left corner. I've already done that. I am gonna show you my um, maiden because I am going to reshuffle these, but I want you to know what her special power is. Gwendolyn's special power is that she can um, 
when in a fan, she can call her all ads, or sell her, excuse me, sell her all ads. And I'll explain to you what that means as we go through, but I think that's a pretty powerful ability. Uh, and uh, so I'll probably use that quite a bit. It does tell you that her heirloom is a long sword, so the long sword is in the deck there. Um, her uh, starting health is she's got two untapped rage cards in the deck, six random cards in the deck. There are 14 random items that have been put in the deck and uh, one dress of my choice, which I've put in the deck as well. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and put her back in the deck. I'm going to shuffle the deck. I'm going to put the seller cards at, or these um, rest cards, excuse me, at the bottom, which are right here. Okay, I'm gonna put these rest cards at the bottom of the deck and then I'll kind of show you uh, how the game goes. This is a very unique game. It doesn't play like anything else that I've played. Um, so uh, hopefully you'll get a pretty good idea of uh, the, the, the flow of things. It can be played solitaire, which is how I'm going to be playing it. You can play it cooperatively with somebody else who have their own deck and you're cooperatively fighting uh, enemies and such. You can play it competitively. There's, it's a very, very modular type game. Very, very... Uh, uh, I keep saying unique, but that is the, to me, the key word to describe this game. It's not like anything else I've played. There are some uh, symbol cheat sheets here that you've got, basically. Uh, you've got melee, magic, charisma, you've got keys, you've got piety and cunning, and then uh, other symbols that will come across as we go, all right? There are even more of them here damage and you've got to distract and foresight and fanning extra fanning your cards and, and again I will explain these as I go on uh, to the best of my ability so first thing I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna shuffle this deck and then once I've done that I'm gonna cut it because the top card on the deck uh, really is where you're gonna start and so that way I don't feel like I'm getting it maybe advanced information alright so I'm gonna go ahead and cut or excuse me Shuffle, shuffle the deck, although I did a horrendous job, so let's do that again. I have shuffled this before, but just to shuffle it again. And then I'm gonna cut it, and whatever's at the top will be my starting card, and I'm gonna put these two rest cards underneath the bottom of the deck, and these, these are really a timer. If you cannot uh, get one of the winning conditions by the uh, time you get to your last level, then you've lost the game. That's one of your lost conditions, all right? So, let me go ahead and cut the deck here. That's gonna be my first card. I'm gonna put my rest cards at the bottom of the deck. I'm gonna be picking these cards up in my hand, and then we're gonna be ready for turn. It doesn't really even go in turns, you just, keep going until you win or lose. Um, and so that's how we're gonna play it. Okay, here we go. So I'm gonna pick up this card, or this deck I should say, and really what you're gonna do is if the front card is not something that needs to be encountered, either a obstacle or enemy or your maiden, then you seller it. It's sellering a card is placing it to the back of the deck. So this is a card that I'm gonna seller. This is another card that I'm gonna sell her. A gray card, I can sell her. The resolve, I sell her. Okay, here we go. Our first potential baddie is the skeleton here, all right? And this is a level one obstacle. I'm on level one of the dungeon, or of the um, tower, okay? And so this obstacle, I have to encounter one way or another. I can run away from it or I could choose to fight it. Now you have to make that choice before you fan your deck, which is going to be the next thing that I'm going to do here. All right. To defeat this skeleton, I need any three of these symbols, any three of melee or piety symbols. If I fail, I'm going to take a damage. All right. That's the the fail condition there. If I succeed, I'm gonna flip this card over and it's going to give me my reward. Most likely it will be upgrading one of the cards in my fan, okay? And so um, I'm gonna to choose to fight this skeleton. I'm gonna hope that in the next five cards in my deck here, which is my fan, I will come across three, combination of three of the 
melee symbols and the uh, piety symbol. So here's what you do. You take your deck and you fan the next five cards. One, two, three, four, five, and then you can look down the hall in the solo game, which means you can see what the you can see what the six card is. It's not part of your fan, but you can see it. All right. Well, this isn't great because I've got only one melee symbol here. Okay. I need three combination of melee and uh, you know what? I'm going to pause right now. I'm going to move my tripod to get it more over my right shoulder so that it's looking more straight down on these cards. And I'm gonna, not going to play with this deck at all. I'm going to leave it right there, and then I'm going to come back. Okay, like I said, this is a unique game, so I'm even going to be filming it a little bit differently. Hopefully this is a little bit better so you can get a better idea of what the cards look like. Okay, so I had my fan here uh, for the skeleton, and I realized that I do not have enough of the symbols that I need. However, I do have something that might help me here. I've got this symbol right here, and that is the distract. What the distract symbol means is that I can sell her one card from my fan. Now, looking down the hall, I can see I've got a card that has two more melee symbols, and I need three to defeat this skeleton. So, if I had access to this card, I'd be able to fulfill that skeleton's uh, win conditions. Well, with the distract, I can sell her any of these cards, move them to the back. When you do that, then you add a card to the fan to replace it. So I will now have access to those two melee symbols. So let's go ahead and, and just sell her my resolve card. Now I've got access to that long sword. I can see, I can see down the hall and see I've got a level two monster there. All right. So I'm doing my best to kind of hold these in such a way you can still see. Um, so now I've got one, two, three melee symbols. The skeleton has been defeated. I can flip this over and it says upgrade. That's what that little uh, upper arrow there, it means upgrade, okay? So I could choose any card in my fan to upgrade. And when you upgrade a card, what you do is you flip it from the blue to the yellow. So in this case, I can take my charisma card, which has one charisma symbol on it, and flip it to my leader card, which now would give me access to two. Or I can do my mage blood, which would go from no symbol and a, and a health to a magic and a health. Okay? Or I can go from my halberd, which gives me that distract symbol that I needed and a melee, to a wild symbol, which it can be very helpful. It can stand for anything. Or I can go with my steel corset and go from a charisma to another charisma, but it gives me three defense, uh, or shields, I should say, um, which could help you when you're trying to defeat uh, or you're trying to deal with damage. Or I can go from my longsword to my vorpal blade, which gives me two melee and a magic instead of just two melee. I'm thinking what I might want to do is get that wild. So the halberd, is, which, although this, this card was extremely helpful to me, it actually was the card that allowed me to defeat that uh, skeleton. I'm gonna go ahead and upgrade that. Once you've done that, once you have defeated this creature or run from it, you take all the cards in your fan and you cellar them, okay? And you put them to the back of your deck. So now, my next card here is the Evil Princess. Now, the Evil Princess is a level two, and I'm on level one. So. I can choose to sell her, her, which I will do. The thief, however, is level one, so I cannot choose to ignore or sell her the thief. Now, the thief needs any five of this combination of melee and or cunning. That's a pretty, wow, that, that is a very, very tall order. And if I fail this, I downgrade a card and I take a damage. I think instead what I'm going to do is choose to run from the thief. When you run, what you do is you fan the cards as per normal, but instead of taking the fail, um, whatever it says for the fail, you just downgrade a, downgrade a card of your choice. So in this case, I'd be saving myself a damage because you still would downgrade. So uh, I don't think I, I don't feel very confident about the five uh, melee and cunning, so I'm going to go ahead and fan out one. Oh, look at that. Two, 
three, four, five, and then that's down the hall. Yeah, I would not have been able to do that, all right? One, two, three, four, five. Uh, I would not have been able to do, to do that. So now what I'm gonna do is downgrade one of these two cards because I can't downgrade those, uh, those encounters there. This is my savior. To downgrade the savior, you flip it over and it actually, in this case, gives me some good stuff. So I'm gonna do that. All right, one, two, three, four, five. These get cellared, all right? Now I'm with Snickers the cat here. I sell her that, I've got a level three ghost I can sell her. Sell her. This is my uh, dress, my armor to tire. Evil consort, okay, here we go. The evil consort, to uh, defeat the evil consort, you need any two um, charismas. The failure is, is downgrading, it would be the same failure to run, so I'm gonna try to defeat the evil consort and hope I can get two charisma symbols here in my fan. There's one. All right. One, two, three, four, five, and that's down the hall. All right, well, it's a bummer. I have one charisma, I needed two. I'm trying to see if there's anything here that I can do, and I don't believe so. Uh, yeah, oh, wait a minute. My ability, my special ability, is I can sell her any ads in my fan. An ad are these cards. <clears throat> Excuse me, these kind of enemy cards. So I am gonna sell her that, put that to the back, and now I've got access to this card, which is a haste. And with the haste, I can negate run damage, and if it's in a fan, I can swap an ad for the encountered obstacle. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna allow me to avoid having to downgrade a card, which is great. That's great. I still didn't defeat the evil consort, but I don't have to uh, downgrade a card because I was able to use the haste. So these are just going to get cellared, all right, without downgrading a card. So now I'm gonna be cellaring and cellaring, oops, and cellaring and cellaring, and I've got a level two orc. I'm going to go away from the orc. Undead orc. I'm going to go away from him because I'm still only level one. Here is my big bad, Dim to Troll. I need any two, any ten symbols to defeat him. I'm definitely not dealing with him at this point. Seller, seller. And we hit our first rest card, okay? And so, when you rest, what you're going to do is you stop, all right? You're gonna flip or rotate it so that now you're in 2A, and then the next time you're gonna get to 2B, and then you'll go to three. This is just basically the timer, okay? You're gonna put these off to the side, and now you're going to shuffle up your deck, and you're going to start again putting this new rest card at the bottom of the deck. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna shuffle these off camera, and then I'm gonna start again. Okay, so I've shuffled the deck. Let me move these up a little bit. Um, I'm going to cut the deck, and then I'm going to place these rest cards underneath them. But now I'm on level two of the tower, and so I can't run away, or I, I, I can still run, but I can't just sell her those level two uh, obstacles. I have to take them into account, either run from them. Am I getting that? There we go. I'm either gonna have to run from them, or I'm gonna have to encounter them. Okay, so here we go. Let me cut the deck. That's my top card, which is the big bad, but he's level three, thankfully. So uh, I'm going to seller him, and I'm gonna keep cellaring until I come across either my maiden or a creature I have to deal with. Wow. This is a treasure, but it has not been discovered yet. There goes my beautiful dress. I'm doing a lot of cellaring here. Here we go. Level one zombie. Okay, so I have to deal with this zombie one way or the other. And what the zombie is looking for is any four of these symbols. Melee, piety, magic. It's a pretty big 
pretty big and it has a double damage which means you know that's that's pretty that's pretty rough but I'm gonna give it a shot I think it's probably dangerous but I'm gonna give it a shot so we've got one and which is good I've got a shield there oh boy okay two three four five and then down the hall all right well my special ability is that I can sell her ads in my fan, so I'm going to sell her both of those. Now that means I can add. I've got one, two, three, four, five, and down the hall. Okay. All right, so I don't have the symbols I need. I've got one melee and one charisma. That's not going to cut it. Um, but I lucked out in that two damage. The, the fail condition here is a damage and there's an extra damage up there. However, I've got two shields and those shields are going to protect me from those two damage. What you have to do with damage, the difference with those, is that those, uh, when you get damage, you have to downgrade cards that have uh, heart symbols on them or, or health symbols on them. But in this case, I don't need to do so because um, I've got those two shields to protect me. So I didn't have to take any real damage there because there's no downgrade symbol here. So one, two, three, four, five. These are gonna get cellared. I didn't defeat the zombie, so I didn't get to upgrade any of my cards, but I didn't get any real uh, penalties there. So let me keep cellaring. Cellar, cellar, cellar. All right. I'm wondering, am I, well, Maybe I'm, I don't know, I may have made a mistake here. I don't know if I'm supposed to have two saviors in my deck. Uh, that may have been a mistake on my part. I don't know. We'll, we'll, I'll, I'll look back on that later, but I don't think it's, you, we're, we're just getting an idea of how the game is played here. Okay, Evil Consort. I need two Charismas. Um, the failure is to downgrade a card. The failure to run away would be to downgrade a card, so I'm going to choose to fight. All right, let's hope I can find two Charismas here. All right, one, two, three... Four. Okay, I'm going to be doing a lot of one, two, three, four, five, and that's down the hall. I'm going to be doing a lot of cellaring here because, again, with my my special ability is to cellar any ads. So I'm going to be cellaring these three. That's a gray card. It's a defeated enemy. So I'm going to be cellaring that too. So those are going to go to the back. That's going to go to the back. And now I can start getting a better fan, hopefully. One, two, three, four, five. I can sell her that because that's an ad. And now I've got one, two, three, four, five, and then that's down the hall. Well, that's a bummer. I've got one symbol that would count, which is my magic symbol here. All right. I need two of the charismas. Believe it or not, I don't have two charismas. So that doesn't do me any good. Uh, the haste um, doesn't help me because I'm not running. Um, yeah, so I basically am going to have to take the failure on this, unfortunately, because I don't have the two charismas. I've got one charisma through the use of that magic symbol. So I have to downgrade a card. All right. So let me look at the cards here. If I want to downgrade Snickers, he's going to be a frazzled cat, which is going to go from a melee and a, uh, a cunning to a melee and a distract. That's not too bad. If I downgrade my hard toed boots, it would go, oh boy, it would go from a melee to three charisma. You know what? I think I'm going to do that because it seems like a lot of these creatures I have to face have charisma. Okay. All right. So one, two, three, four, five. I downgrade or I sell her all those. And now I come to the ghost. The ghost is level three, so I can sell her that. And we're back to the evil consort again. All right. Um, another evil consort. I'm going to try fighting her again. Hope I do better on this evil consort. Oh, I rest. That's it. So these, it doesn't matter because that's going to be all shuffled. So now I go ahead and put those rest cards aside. I'm going to shuffle these off camera, cut the deck, and then I'll flip this rest card 
From a 2A to a 2B, I still get to stay on level two at least, but I'm getting closer to that loss condition. Okay, the deck has been shuffled. I'm gonna cut it, and then I'm gonna put these rest cards underneath. And we'll cut right to a zombie. So now I'm on 2B, but I'm still on level two, which is important to keep in mind when I'm choosing, who, or when I'm figuring out who I have to encounter and who I can avoid. I can't avoid this level one zombie, which takes four of these symbols, four melee, piety, and magic. I Two damage. I'm going for it. Uh, it's probably foolhardy, but I need to upgrade some cards or I'm just not going to be really getting anywhere, I don't think. Okay. Okay, so. This is my fan. These five are my fan, and then I'm looking down the hall here. Um, I can... Right now, I can sell her this undiscovered treasure. I can sell her this defeated skeleton, which is now just a pile of bones, as it says there on the card. And I can add to my fan here. So I have one, two, three, four, five. That's, oh, that's good. Okay. Let's hope I've got enough. I don't know that I do, actually. One, two, three, four, five. And then, uh. Okay. So, any four, magic. I'm going to just miss again. Magic, piety, and melee. And I'm going to just miss because I'm going to have one melee, two of anything, and I need one more. One, two, three, four, five. Yep. And I, th that, th that wouldn't even help me right there. Well, that's a bummer. Um, oh, wait, wait. Am I, did I miss a card? There's a card hidden back here. There's a card hidden there. That shouldn't be, that shouldn't be out there. Okay. I had a card hidden. One, two, three, four, five. That's down the hall. Two, three, four. Okay, so I've got access to. That's still not going to help me. I've got a cunning and a charisma. Yeah. I still don't have the four I need. I have one, two. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, that's down the hall. I've got two, basically, two of those four that I need. But the fail condition is two damage. I do have two shields. So. I get protected from that, but again, I don't get to upgrade cards. I'm, do, I'm, I'm really struggling to get the cards that I need to um, defeat even these low-level creatures. One, two, three, four, five. So these are all going to get cellared. All right. I have not ever beat this game, and it's not looking good right here. It's tough. It is tough. All right. Keep cellaring until you come across something you have to face. Magically locked door. Now... To complete this successfully, you need a key and a magic. I do not have a key that I have even been able to get access to in my deck, so uh, I'm just, you can actually run away uh, from this one um, without any damage. You don't have to, uh, you don't have to do a fan if i remember right i'm gonna look really quickly yeah if the obstacle uh, is a zero you can sell her without fanning anything behind it okay so i'm gonna do that i'm just gonna sell her this card because the fail condition is horrible and i don't have a key there's no way i can defeat that you can find keys that are going to be on the back of some of these cards if you've upgraded them or even i think downgraded them i think you can find them that way just cellaring cellaring okay evil consort any two charismas i really gotta hope i can do this i'm gonna try one, two, three, four, five, and then down the hall. Yeah, I should be in good shape here because I'm going to be able, thanks to my special ability, to sell her these two ads. Now, the bad side about that is that you're burning through your deck and you're getting to that ending condition, uh, loss condition, more quickly by cellaring these. One, two, three, four. I maybe only should have cellared one. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, and then down the hall. All right, and I need two of the charisma symbols. And I have two, I've got one here and I've got one here. So I have defeated this evil consort, finally. Uh, I flip it over and I can upgrade a card. So what do I wanna upgrade? One, two, three, four, five, and that one's down the hall. Um, black high heels, no, the resolve, no. The War Sensor, yeah, I like that because I don't have a lot of piety in my deck. And that gives me two piety and a haste. All right, so one, two, one, two, three, four, five. So let's get cellared. 
All right, here I go. Undead orc, well. Level two, I've got to decide. Four damage is the, is the fail condition here. And I need any four of these symbols. I'm not feeling terribly confident about that. I think I'm gonna run from the undead orc just because his fail condition is so bad. One, two, three, four, five, and that's down the hall. His, I have to just have to downgrade a card here. I could, oh no, I'm running. So I, I, I think what I'm gonna do is just downgrade this untapped rage to turn it into a blood rage, which actually gives me a melee. So I'll do that. One, two, three, four, five, right? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, that was down the hall. So now I've got an orc. This is another baddie for melee and cunning. I'm gonna go ahead and try to fight it because I just feel like I've been doing nothing but running or losing. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, that's a good, that's a, oh, 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 oh. Shoot, because I've got a rest card there. One, two, three, four, five. Do I go ahead and just sell it? Well, because I can't win. So I think what I'm going to do is use my ability to seller these. That's going to get me to the rest card, which ends this encounter immediately. I don't even have to deal with it. So I didn't get the damage, but I also didn't get anything. And I'm getting ever closer to burning this deck because now I go down to tower level three, which is going to be right here, 3A. All right. So again, I'm going to shuffle these off, de off camera, come back, cut them, and continue to fail miserably here. All right, the deck's been shuffled. I'm gonna cut the deck. Now I'm on level three of the tower. So I've got to deal with more of these bad guys and girls. All right, here we go. Seller, seller, seller. Lots of sellering, all these potentially good cards being Ruined here. Okay. Evil Princess. Any four charisma or cunning. I'm going to give it a shot. One, two, three, four, five. Let's see here. One, two, three, four, five. And then down the hall. It's right there. Okay. So let's go ahead and sell her this pile of bones. Let's sell her this undead orc. One, two, three, four, five. Wow, okay. One, two, three, four, five, and then one more down the hall. I'm gonna go ahead and sell her both of those. One, two, three, four, five. I'm gonna sell her that. I'm gonna bring this into the fan. I'm gonna sell her that. Now I should be in good shape. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, yeah, I should be in good shape here. Okay, so I need any four of the charisma or cunning. I've got three, one, two, three, four, five. So yeah, I've got three cunning. I've got three magic symbols so I can finally um, start to easily defeat things. Now I also have this foresight. And what this allows you to do is collapse the fan, look at five cards behind the fan, and reposition or seller each one of them. So I think I'm gonna do that. So one, two, three, four, five. So this is my fan, I'm gonna collapse that. I'll put that back on top here in a minute. I can look at the next five. I can reposition or seller each one. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. Oops, okay, so five, yeah. I should only be looking at those, okay. So this takes any four, and I've got two of them. So now do I wanna keep this in that uh, fan or do I, wanna, do I wanna seller it? Because I know that I only have two of the four there. So I think what I'm gonna go ahead and do is just seller that. I'll keep these where they are 
then I come back to this encounter, okay? So uh, I did defeat it. I get to flip it over and I get an upgrade a card, all right? So I could upgrade my dress. But, oh no, I can't, I don't wanna do that. I can only downgrade that. All right, index of the drakes. Oh, I like that. This allows me to add one to my fan. So I'm gonna go ahead and upgrade that card. One, two, three, four, five. So these go to the back. All right. And now I've got my sewing kit. I'm gonna go ahead and sell her. My chair, untapped rage, defeated consort ally, my makeup kit, raw potential, bunny slippers. I love the names of these cards, charisma. And my do the door, I'm gonna see, I'm just burning through this deck. All right, goblin. Any three, melee and cunning, I'm going for it. I need to start defeating these things. One, two, three, four, five, and then down the hall. I need three of them, and I should be able to do that. One, two, three, four, that's down the hall. So I, I, I do need to sell her that because of my ability to bring this into my fan because I'll need it. All right, oh, I'm sorry. I, I, I know that a lot of times I'm gonna be a little bit off because I'm adjusting this, uh, this um, deck, but hopefully you get an idea. I, I know it's not perfectly in frame all the time, but this is, again, this is such a, a different type of game. I'm not used to presenting something that's being played all in hand. I'm used to having things on the table here. So um, hopefully it's not too distracting for you. Okay, so I need any three melee or cunning symbols. I've got a cunning symbol here and I've got my two melee symbols there. So I'm good to go there. I do have those three. I can flip the goblin over. He's now a defeated goblin and I can upgrade a card. Um, no, that's gonna downgrade it. That's already upgraded. Uh, my resolve can get upgraded. My charisma can get upgraded. That's not bad. Snickers the cat can get upgraded. Snickers a familiar, yeah, I like that just because I want to upgrade my cat. All right, so now Snickers is not just a cat, he's a familiar. One, two, three, four, five. These are gonna go to the back of the deck. Now here we go, the steel corset. Ah, yes, I finally have encountered my maiden. Hooray! So, what happens when you encounter your maiden and she's not in a fan, is that you get a fan the next five cards and you can upgrade any with the corresponding symbol. So if there are any cards in my fan that have the melee symbol, I can upgrade it. So let's hope, oh, and I've rested. No, that ended that. That's a real shame for me. All right, so I'm gonna flip this to 3B. Uh, you know what, I'll go ahead and this, this I'll, I'll do this quickly. I'll just go ahead and shuffle on camera this time because that's always exciting to see, right? Nothing is more entertaining than shuffling. Perhaps I will tell an anecdote while I'm shuffling. I can't think of an anecdote, so I'll just shuffle. All right, basically when you are shuffling, actually this is a good uh, thing to bring up, is that the one thing you do have to remember is that when you're shuffling in this game, since you're switching the orientation of cards through upgrading or downgrading, um, it's important that when you're shuffling, you keep them in the orientation that they currently are in. Uh, because otherwise, that will mess things up. All right. All right, so I've shuffled. Now I'm going to cut the deck, put this 3B underneath. I'm still on level 3, but I'm getting ever closer to my imminent demise. All right, so now we've got a level 1 zombie, so I've got to decide whether I'm going to be fighting this or running from it. I need any 4, melee, piety, magic. I'm gonna hope that with some of these upgraded cards that I've gotten that I can defeat it, so I am gonna encounter it, I'm not gonna run. Well, there's a whole lot of charisma and the zombie doesn't care about charisma. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, that looks good. And then down the hall. Okay, so I th let me see here. One, two, three, four. Yeah, I'm good, I'm good. Okay, so. Starting to see some upgraded cards, and, and there I am. I'm off, I'm off frame again. Sorry, I gotta remember to keep my hands down here. Um, these upgraded cards are making it so that these lower level creatures are not as posing as much of a problem. Uh, you can see a lot more symbols on these cards than we did at the beginning of the game, okay? So I've got one, two, three, four, and even five if I needed it there, okay? So the zombie is now a twice dead corpse, and now, I have a key. 
that key can help me with that magical door and can also help me potentially escape if I on, on one of these cards there's um, on on the opposite side a exit that can you can exit if you've got the key plus a number of other symbols. Um, very difficult to do because you have to have that key in your fan, but it is possible. All right, and now I can upgrade a card. So, one, two, three, four. I want to make sure I'm getting cards that are actually in my fan. Snickers has already been upgraded. That can't be upgraded. Let's upgrade my black high heels to the high IQ heels. All right, one, two, three, four, five. Those are going to go ahead and get cellared. And now I'm back to Resolve, Broadsword, and a level two orc. Any four, melee, and cunning. I'm gonna give it a shot, although the penalty is pretty steep. It's three damage. One, two, three, four, five, and then down the hall. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and due to my special ability, I'm gonna sell her that. Troll, one, two, three, four. Now this is in my fan, five. Okay, I need four. I've got one, two, three, and four. Now I'm starting to get some, uh, getting some successes now as I've upgraded cards. One, two, three, and four. So I defeated this orc. He's now a dead orc. There's no better orc than a dead orc, I suppose. Makeup kit can go to War paint. I don't think you can upgrade your. No, nope, can't upgrade your. Let's go ahead and upgrade the makeup kit to war paint. All right. One, two, three, four, and five. That was my fan. That goes to the back. Mage blood, spiked buckler, allied princess, longsword, steel corset, raw potential, an evil consort. Okay. Any two charismas? I'm gonna choose to fight. One, two, three, four, and five. And then down the hall, trying to only worry about those. Do I need, I don't need to get rid of that because I've got a charisma here and a magic symbol or a, uh, uh, not magic, but a wild symbol there. All right, so I've got my two charisma that I need. I go ahead and defeat that consort ally and I can upgrade a card. I can upgrade my sewing kit to a bag of never-ending stuff and I like that because it gives me a wild and it gives me a haste all right one two three four five okay those get cellared go into my bunny slippers my mace charisma and a thief any five melee and cunning now that's pretty tough but I'm gonna give it a shot all right One, two, three, four, and five, and then that is... Okay, so first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and sell her that because of my special ability and sell her that because it's a gray card. One, two, three, four, and five. Now, this symbol, this plus one, means that I can add one to my fan. So I'm gonna do that. Okay, so now this is my fan of six, and there's the rest. Okay, so I need to somehow, I could do one of two things. If I can't defeat this thief, then I'm just going to sell her this to get to the, to the rest so that I can just get away from the thief without any penalty. Um, and it, that's probably what I'm going to do because I only have one symbol that I need. So I'll sell her that. I've got a fan of six, one, two, three, four, five, and now this is in my fan. So I'm just gonna go ahead and end it there. And that's gonna be the end without any damage. Now I'm at 4A. I'll go ahead and pause the camera here because uh, I think shuffling once is good enough and then I'll come back and I'm gonna be on the last level. All right, I've shuffled. I said I was on the last level, but I don't think that's correct. I'm pretty sure I was on 3B, so I have a 3C. Um, and then I'll go to the last level. So I'm going to go ahead. I shuffled. I'm going to go ahead and cut. And then I'm going to put that 3C at the bottom. Hopefully I did that right. I, I, I don't think I was on 3C before. I'm pretty sure I was on 3B. So here we go. Let's see if I can uh, do some damage. Dead Orc. Consort Ally. IQ Heals. Undiscovered Treasure. 
blowing through cards. That's not terrific. All right. Oh, boy. Wow. Okay, well, I've defeated a lot of enemies. I guess that's, you know. Now, magically locked door. This has a key and a magic symbol. Unlike the last time that I encountered this magically locked door, I do have one key in this deck, but I think it is remarkably unlikely that it's in the next five cards and that there will also be a magic symbol. And the downside is really bad, so I'm going to go ahead and sell her that. Oh, shoot. That was right here. And I know Snickers was on the familiar side. Okay, here's my Maiden, so I gotta try this again. Hopefully I don't have a uh, rest in my fan this time. I can fan the next five cards and upgrade a um, melee if there's one in there. One, two, yeah, good. One, two, three, four, five. So I can upgrade either one of these two cards. I can upgrade my Mace to Last Mace of the Sorrows, or I can upgrade my broadsword, ooh, to a Holy Avenger. I like that because I do want to get more different types of symbols, all right? One, two, three, four, and five. So the war paint is the last one in that fan. Now I've got the Allied Princess, a Charisma, Pile of Bones, Bag of Never Ending Stuff, Longsword, Twice Dead Corpse, and a Ghost. Okay, so the Ghost needs four Piety symbols, but and that's going to be tough. I don't know that I'm going to be able to defeat the ghost, but I have to either run or encounter it. I am going to encounter it because I'm hoping I've got enough wild symbols, if nothing else, and maybe some other ways to manipulate my fan. This is a risk, uh, but I'm going to give it a shot. So one. Okay, well, there's going to be a lot of cellaring here. And there's my rest already. Wow. Okay. Now I'm at the last level. Oops. Let's just go ahead and shuffle these up. Because I think that there's not much I think that I'm not much longer for this game. It's going to be rough. I have to hope that I can encounter that, uh, that bad guy and be able to do something about it. Oops, got to make sure I don't mess up the orientation there. Okay, go ahead and cut these. Put this last level rest card underneath the bottom. And hope for the best here. Here's that ghost again. Uh, I'm going to run from the ghost. I don't want to worry about the ghost. One, two, three four and five so i get a, i have to downgrade one of these cards in my fan one two three four five let's downgrade no oops wrong card sorry that needs to stay there i've got a couple of broken hearts uh do i yeah i'll go ahead and take my incensed sensor and move it down to a war sensor it's a bummer. One, two, three, four, and five. So these go back. Pile of bones. Resolve. Mace. Armored tire. Blood rage. The chair. Snickers the familiar. Untapped rage. All right, here we go. I'm really hoping I come across that big bad and that I can somehow defeat it. There he is. Okay. Dim to troll. If I can defeat this guy, I can win the game. I don't know how likely it's going to be, but we're going to give this a shot. We're going to hope for the best. I need to get 10, any 10 symbols. All right. Um, I do have a lot of wild cards in there. Um, you know, again, I don't know that it's terribly likely, but. We're going to give it a shot because I'm already in the last level here, and th this is basically my, my hope. If I defeat this captor, I win the game. All right, here we go. 
10 icons is what I'm looking for. So, <clears throat> one, two, three, four, five. Okay, okay, let's see here. And I get an add one to my fan. One, two, three, four, five. So I add that to my fan. I think I'm going to just miss out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, that is brutal. Just missed. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I added one to my fan. That that haste does not count. I, I'm I'm almost positive that that ca that haste will not count as an icon towards the troll. I'd love for it to. I'd love to think it did, but I really don't. I think what you're really looking for there are either melee, magic, charisma, piety, cunning, or a wild. Um, and that doesn't really do anything for me. The, the only other thing I could have done here was look at the five cards behind it, but I have no way of bringing other cards into my fan, so it doesn't really do me any good. So, to fail, you have to do three damage. I have no hearts, so what you basically have to do is keep going through your deck until you find hearts and downgrade those. So I have a feeling I'm gonna to come to the end before that, but let's go ahead and do that anyway. I got really close. Um, so that's, I have to keep looking until I get fine hearts, but I think I'm going to come to rest before then. And there we are. All right. Well, it was a loss. I got close. Actually, I got closer, I think, than I've ever come. Uh, I was one symbol away from defeating, uh, Dim to Troll there, but, uh, was not to meant to be, just not meant to be. It was close, but uh, no cigar. Well, hopefully you got an idea of how that very unique game of Maiden's Quest is played. Again, apologies for, uh, I'm sure there were many times the cards were not in the ideal camera frame, but uh, th this was, a, because it's an, a unique game and, and a different way of playing it, uh, the recording was also a little bit different. I was uh, just trying to give you more of a feel of how it plays where you really, you can have this in your pocket, uh, and you could be standing in line and playing it. You really just need this deck of cards and your hand. And, and um, when I heard it described to me by the designer, I was really curious as to whether it work, would work and if so, how. And uh, it works. It's really, really intriguing. So hopefully you get a good idea of how it's played. As always, I appreciate your time. Thank you so much, and have a great day.